We have talked at length about the Avs drafting a D at pick 27 from Oliver Bonk and Tanner Molendyke as two of our favorites to the Russians and other options too. But what if the Avs don't take a D with 27? Here are three options they could go with. I know you're expecting this video to be about forwards, and two of these options will be. But first, we have to talk about the always controversial option of drafting a goalie in the first round. If the Avs are going to do this, there's only one goalie that it really makes sense to do, and that's Michael Hrabble. At nearly 6'7", 215 pounds, Hrabble is going to be a goaltender with plus-plus size. And while he's not going to fly around the ice like a much smaller goaltender, for a goaltender that big, he moves quite well. He's considered the most well-rounded goalie prospect of the class, and he played this last year in the USHL with the Omaha Lancers. In 31 games, he posted a 9.08 save percentage with a 2.81 goals against average, which aren't incredible numbers, but when you consider the Lancers were one of the worst teams in the USHL, often Harabal was carrying them to games. This showed in his international play, including the U18 World Juniors. He plays for Czechia. There, he posted a 920 save percentage in five games. Across other international competitions, it gets even better, where he showed a 927 and just a 2.43 goals against average in 13 games. On top of his size and mobility, when Harabal is on his game, he tracks the puck extremely well and is able to play calm and collected. To think more Philip Grubauer. On his weakness, he can tend to play a little bit too passive at times, not challenging shooters enough, and with a body his size and moving as well as he does, he at times did struggle with fatigue. With this being Harabal's first year in North America playing on the smaller ice, many were very excited about how quickly he adapted to the new environment. In fact, some scouts were even comparing him to Jake Ottinger. Harabal is attending UMass as a freshman next year, so whoever drafts him will have four years of his rights. Krabbel is the top goalie on the vast majority of lists, and if they are going to take one with that pick at 27, it's going to be him. Will they actually do that? I doubt it, but it's on the table. With the goalie conversation out of the way, let's move on to two potential forwards the Avs can take at 27. Starting off with the Swedish David Edstrom. Edstrom is another big body, a 6'3 left shooting center that played out of Frölunda's system this season over in both the Swedish juniors and 11 games in the SHL. In juniors, he was a point per game player with 28 points in 28 games, including 15 goals, and he managed to rack up four points in 11 games in in the Pro League. Edstrom's rankings are a bit all over the place. Some have him ranked as high as 23 on their boards, with some not ranking him until the end of the second round. Just 185 pounds, Edstrom does have a lot of filling out to do on that big frame. That is something you can expect to happen over the next couple of years. And most scouts project him as a two-way center at the next level. His ability to handle himself physically at the pro level in the SHL is one of the keys for taking Edstrom potentially in the first round. Obviously, he has a number of the hallmarks to become a power forward at the NHL level if he can play in a certain style. And offensively, he makes his money in and around the net, which is something that he has to be able to do. Outside of slamming home rebounds, most scouts project him as more of a playmaker than a goal scorer. This would make a transition to wing potentially a bit more difficult for him as he likes to facilitate through the middle. His skating isn't going to blow anyone away, but he has good technical footwork that will get the job done for him, especially at his size. The primary concern here is with his skill ceiling. There are question marks around how well he can effectively play at the next level. While defense and net front things should translate just fine when it comes to creating opportunities in open space, beating defenders one-on-one, -on -one, and finding the soft spots in the ice, it's unclear if Edstrom will be able to do that. He projects much more as a middle six shutdown center that plays the PK for you and some of your toughest matchups. Historically, we've seen the Avs take a liking to some of these types of players with a bit lower ceilings, and we've also seen them struggle to get NHL players out of them. So I'm not sure if this would be a great choice for Colorado, but it's definitely one they could consider. The thing is, Edstrom may actually be the consolation prize. Coming out of the same organization, playing on the same teams for Lunda's J20 team and games in the SHL, is Otto Stenberg. 
Stenberg was actually a bit less productive than Edstrom in Sweden. 26 points in 29 games in the junior 20s with just 11 goals and only 3 points in 23 games of SHL action. However, he did earn significantly more action in the pro league than Edstrom did. Stenberg, who is also a left shot center like Edstrom, profiles as a very different player. Just 5 foot 11 and 180 pounds and he also can play wing. Where Stenberg stood out this year was at the U18 World Juniors. As captain of the Swedish team, he scored 16 points in 7 games, including 7 goals. That's double the production we saw out of Edstrom. He was dominant internationally all season long, in total 32 points in 19 international games at the U18 level. And this is why he's considered a first-round talent. On the ice, he does just about everything well. Maybe most importantly, he reads the game at a high level and has the right mentality and determination to take steps towards making the jump to the next level. He may not always wow you with highlight Rio plays, but he rarely makes any mistakes. He has good skating mechanics and is very sneaky when it comes to his ability in one-on-one -on -one situations to make moves and beat defenders, things that are necessary for a player of his size. Again, 5'11", 180, not tiny, but he's not going to be out-muscling a ton of guys at the NHL level. He, however, is not the fastest skater in a straight line, maybe one of the biggest drawbacks when looking how he might fit into the Avalanche system. While he probably doesn't project as a penalty killer at the next level, he has no problem handling himself in a defensive zone and should not be a detriment there. There are a few question marks about his offensive consistency and whether he has the ability to produce both with his quality of shot and passing ability at the next level, but I'd be lying if I didn't say that was a knock on most prospects. For a reasonable comparable, you might think of him as a future JT Comfer for the Av, flexing throughout the lineup in the middle six, playing both center and wing, some offensive and finishing ability, but intermittent consistency with it. And while he may lack some of the defensive ability, certainly a player that's not going to hurt you on that end. There are a dozen other prospects the Avs could take at pick 27, and that's if they even keep the pick. But these three do fit similar molds to a number of picks they have taken in recent history, so it's some to keep your eye on. To find out who they pick, you'll just have to watch the NHL draft. AJ and I will be live on this very channel, watching along for the draft, so come hang out with us. We'll break down whatever prospect it is the Avs end up with.